Well, hi, I'm Zora Van Leeuwen, uh, and I'm going to try to give you a whistle-stop tour of my um, PhD, um, which I did at the University of Leeds School of Geography. Um, and it was titled Natural Flood Management Potential of Leaky Dams in Upland Catchments. Um, so my, my PhD project was um, an empirical before after control impact study um, on the impacts of leaky dams in upland streams on flood peak magnitude. Um, so I'm going to give you a bit of background information on that um, tell you what my research questions were, my methods and results, uh, a bit on the significance and implications of my findings, and then I'll just repeat my headline findings to you. Um, so I assume that you're all familiar with natural flood man management and leaky dams. Um, I've put the um, definition of natural flood management on this uh, slide from um, the SEPA Natural Flood Management Handbook. Um, so leaky dams um, are a, a popular natural flood management measure. Um, they've been used in upland settings um, in a number of flagship NFM projects. Um, which include um, Pickering, Hardcastle Crags, and Honeycote. Um, so quite a few of the big early projects. Um, as you can see on the picture on the right, uh, they can consist of one or more tree stems, uh, which are paste, paste, placed perpendicular to the flow um, and are approximately one and a half times the channel width at least. Uh, and they tend to have a small gap below them, uh, which allows base flow to pass beneath. <laughs> um, they are known to locally increase hydraulic roughness, reduce flow velocity and increase floodplain connectivity. Now, recent research has shown um, that they can affect flood peak timing at a range of spatial scales, which is really quite exciting. Excuse me. <laughs> My voice has gone all hoarse from uh, practicing this presentation this morning. <laughs> um, thing is, the um, the impact of leaky dams on flood peak magnitude isn't known yet, um, even at the stream scale. Never mind at, at sort of larger spatial scales. <laughs> Coughing is not the in vogue thing to do, is it? Um, excuse me. So um, why do we need to know what the impact on flood peak magnitude is? Um, well, we need to know what the benefits are uh, for flood risk management, um, for cost benefit analysis, uh, which is needed for publicly funded flood risk management schemes. Um, it'll be important for the upcoming environmental land management scheme, um, which will uh, be based on payments for outcomes. Um, we know that uncertainty about the impacts of uh, NFM measures presents a barrier to their uptake, um, and that's known from interviews with stakeholders. Um, and there's also little guidance as to how to represent leaky dams in hydraulic and hydrological models. Um, and that's because there is little validation data. Um, and of course, such models will increase confidence in their design and assessment um, of NFM schemes and will help with upscaling their impacts. Um, the reason uh, this hasn't been done is that it's quite difficult um, there's, there's various reasons for this. So um, first of all, isolating the effects of individual NFM measures is tricky because often when an NFM scheme is put in, um, there'll be a range of different measures um, put in, including leaky dams, 
we might not necessarily be able to separate their impacts from the impacts of other measures. Um, there's often short lead times um, for projects, which means uh, short monitoring periods, especially the baseline monitoring period. Um, flood events are stochastic in nature. Um, a rare flood event isn't going to happen regularly, so you'd have to be extremely lucky to capture a big flood before and after you've installed your leaky dams so that you can compare the impacts. Um, and then there's actually just high levels of uncertainty associated with hydrological data, and that can, can mask the signal of uh, NFM interventions in your hydrological data. Um, there are a few studies which have managed to um, quantify the impact of um, placing wood within the channel on uh, flood peak man magnitude, um, but those have used artificial reservoir releases um, to sort of repeatedly test a channel before and after wood is placed. Um, so in Germany, a 2.3% reduction in flood peak magnitude was found for a one in three and a half year event. And in the US, uh, an 8% reduction for a one in one year event. Um, but these studies uh, tested different types of wood than leaky dams. They were quite significantly different. They didn't extend onto the banks. They were in line with the flow um, and just, just generally quite different. Um, but um, recently, as I mentioned, the impact um, of uh, flood peak timing has been quantified at a range of spatial scales. Wood in rivers uh, can also present a hazard. Um, it's highly mobile uh, in rivers, and there's a concern that reintroducing it uh, could increase the associated risks. So, for example, um, blockage of downstream structures such as culverts and bridges, um, which can exacerbate flooding and damage infrastructure. Um, there's also a worry that um, once a leaky dam fails, it could um, release a surge of water and that could lead to cascade failure of further leaky dams. Um, if your leaky dams are failing, there's of course a risk that your scheme is then underperforming as well. Um, leaky dam failures have been observed across the UK um, and there's actually 13 fatalities associated with beaver dam failures in the US and Canada. Having um, a better understanding of the probability of failure of leaky dams um, could therefore help to assure flood risk managers stakeholders and affected communities that the benefits of uh, placing leaky dams outweigh the hazards. Um, some network analysis has been done uh, to inform effective placement um, of leaky dams to reduce the, re the risk of breach and cascade failure. Um, but those models um, are based on assumptions about the failure probability of leaky dams. Um, so by adding empirical data into that, they can be improved. And hopefully this can also um, inform inspection and maintenance regimes. So that leads me to my three um, research questions. Um, so to overcome the difficulties associated with detecting NFM impacts, I took a data-based time series modeling approach. So the first step of that was to see whether I could fit a statistical model which could accurately represent the baseline pre-intervention condition of the streams. So whether they could emulate um, my data that I'd collected during the baseline period. Um, and then the second step or the second research question was to use those predictions to assess whether the leaky dams reduced peak magnitude for all of the events uh, which were recorded after the leaky dams were installed. 
And then lastly, a trial done approach um, called fragility analysis to quantify the probability of failure of leaky dams based on observations of leaky dam resilience and failure. Because of time, I'm mainly going to talk about um, the second and third um, research question. Um, so I had a study site in uh, the Yorkshire Dales National Park. Uh, it was a, a headwater catchment, which consisted of several small steep streams. Um, I collected uh, stage data using pressure tran transducers uh, at one minute intervals for one and a half years before and one and a half years after I installed leaky dams in the site. Um, as you can see on the right, um, there was a gauging station at the top and the bottom of each of those reaches. Um, so I had two impact reaches and one control reach. Um, so I also developed rating curves uh, for each of the gauging stations um, by calibrating 1D HECRAS models of each of the sites. Um, to spot discharge gaugings. So that would then allow me to um, convert my data from stage data to discharge data. Um, I built six to eight leaky dams uh, in each of the impact streams in uh, the autumn and winter of 2018 with the support of the Yorkshire Dales Rivers Trust. During the monitoring period, I observed quite a large range of, of events um, with a return period of up to one in six years. So here's a, a little bit of information um, about the leaky dams that I built. Um, the ones in um, the main impact stream had an average width of 4.6 meters, a height of nearly one meter, they had a 0.3 meter gap beneath them and they were spaced at 25 meter intervals on average. Um, and the stream gradient was 0.01 meter per meter, which is quite steep really. Um, the dams were built following uh, the guidance of the Yorkshire Dales Rivers Trust um, and also with their support um, with volunteers and professionals. Uh, and of course, I, I obtained an ordinary water course consent before building the dams. Um, so what you can see here um, is the, the very peak bit of uh, four events in the impact on the control stream. So the solid line is the downstream stage observed after the leaky dams were installed. And the dotted line is what the model predicts downstream stage would have been had no leaky dams been installed. So I'm sorry I've not had time to tell you much about that model, but um, it, it was fairly accurate. It was able to predict um, flood peaks to within two centimeters for data which it hadn't, hadn't been used to train the model. Um, so that's uh, reflected in the um, gray shaded area there as well. Um, and you can see uh, on the impact stream, the peak stage uh, is reduced after the leaky dams um, were installed, and the difference between the two lines is bigger than the prediction intervals. Um, whilst on the control stream, they're more similar, and it's mostly within the prediction intervals. Um, so that's, that's giving us an idea that the leaky dams are doing something. Um, so I did this for all of the events um, that I observed um, and took that difference um, in terms of the uh, percentage difference between those two lines at the peak of the event um, in terms of discharge. Sorry, I mixed up saying that. It's the, <laughs> it's the percentage difference in peak discharge with and without leaky dams. So that's what the treatment effect is on the um, y-axis there. Um, 
So you can see that on the impact stream um, with leaky dams, we're um, having, having an impact, especially during smaller events. Um, leaky dams were effective for events with a return period up to one year, which is approximately one meter cubed um, discharge on, on that figure, so that's peak discharge. Um, and on average, the peak magnitude was reduced by 10%. Um, the effectiveness was highly variable, even for small events. Um, so you could have two events with the same peak magnitude and one could be reduced by 40% and the other could be not reduced at all. Uh, so I had a look at uh, factors such as the event duration, the time since the previous event, um, the steepness of the rising limb, the total event volume and the peak number to see whether um, any of these things could explain a bit of this variability. None of those factors really fully explained the differences, um, but as you can see in the right hand figure, um, whether the peak was the first, second or third peak of the event had a significant impact on the median peak magnitude reduction. Um, so, so what that means is that um, the first peak of, of uh, events tended to be significantly reduced by the leaky dams. But if the peak was the third, or the second, the third or any subsequent peaks of an event, then they weren't reduced generally. Um, so that brings me on to the uh, question about resilience. Um, I carried out a survey of practitioners um, to ask about their experience of leaky dam resilience. Um, and I also did post event walkovers uh, on my study site after all big flood events. Um, I got responses to the survey from 15 leaky dam sites across the UK, um, which covered almost 2000 uh, in-stream leaky dams. So ones similar to the ones on my field site um, that were installed from 2010 onwards. And of those only about 2% had failed, which um, I thought was quite low really. Um, so I did a fragility analysis uh, to estimate the probability of failure of leaky dams based on the return period of the event during which a failure occurred. Fragility analysis is traditionally used in earthquake engineering um, based on the number of buildings or infrastructures such as highway bridges, um, which reached a certain failure state during an earthquake. Um, but they're, they're actually also used by the Environment Agency uh, to make investment decisions about flood defence assets at a strategic level. Um, so it's not unusual to use them in flood risk management. Um, data for sites um, in which failures occurred, which, is, which are all shown in red um, on the map, uh, was used to estimate pooled fragility functions for um, these five sites where failures occurred. Um, so the fragility function on the right, the curve there, or the curves there, shows um, the probability of failure conditional on the flood return period um, of a sort of average leaky dam across those five sites. Um, and what I found is that the probability of a, a complete failure occurring uh, was 0.01 for a five-year event and up to 0.24 for a one in 100-year event. This approach provides a proof of concept um, for pooled fragility curves of leaky dam failures. Uh, with data from more sites, the fragility functions would stabilize and they could provide a national picture of leaky dam resilience. Um, 
So um, I think one of the first things to note is that um, I found that the peak magnitude um, of events was not reduced during events which caused downstream flooding of infrastructure and properties. Um, the leaky dams were effective during small frequent events, but not during more extreme events. Um, so this is uh, in agreement with uh, the other two studies which I'd mentioned, um, but also the views of um, things such as the Oxford Martin evidence restatement, um, which questioned the effectiveness of NFM measures during extreme events. But I think it's really important to note that um, results are site and structure specific. So um, as I've mentioned recently, uh, leaky dam impacts on peak timing were found to increase with peak magnitude. And this has also been uh, seen in modeling studies. And it seems to depend on the um, available, uh, availability of extendable field storage. So uh, flood bank connectivity really. Um, the effectiveness during those uh, more frequent events was highly variable. And I think it's really important um, that that's noted uh, to manage expectations. Um, both empirical modeling studies should take into account events with different characteristics, um, and particularly multi peaked events, um, to avoid over promising and under delivering. And that is important to avoid over reliance of communities on leaky dams for flood risk management. Um, this study brought together the first data set of leaky dam failures. Um, leaky dams were less resilient to failure than traditional engineered assets, as would be expected. Um, but they are less likely to become mobile than naturally occurring large wood. Um, there was quite a lot of variability between sites, which showed that. Um, site and dam specific factors are quite important things to consider. Um, and these, as more data emerges, it, it will become possible to develop fragility curves for uh, different types of assets and environments. Um, I think that empirical quantification of failure probability um, can be used to increase confidence in the assumptions about failure in risk assessment and also in models. Um, and they can be used in strategic investment decisions about NFM assets, um, which will include informing maintenance requirements. Um, so my headline findings, um, eight leaky dams in an upland catchment reduced peak magnitude of events with a return period less than one year by 10% on average. But leaky dam effectiveness was highly variable between events. Um, I've not talked about this very much, but um, the methods that I used, um, the database time series modeling methods, can overcome um, some of the difficulties associated with detecting NFM impacts, um, which, which means uh, we could get results for lots of different types of dams and environments. Um, the failure probability for pooled sites across the UK was relatively low. Um, and I think these um, findings are all um, useful to manage expectations, which I think in the long run support sustained um, working with natural processes to manage flood risk. 